Along the banks of the St. Lawrence River in southeast Canada lies the city of Montreal. With a metro population of 4.3 million people and a GDP of $180 billion, it is Canada's second largest city in the heart of the Quebec region. To operate efficiently, Montreal relies heavily on its transport infrastructure, including its six commuter rail lines. However, these lines underserve Montreal's West Island and South Shore areas, which have developed significantly in recent years. This situation has not gone unnoticed. In 2015, Michael Sabia, the CEO of CDPQ, a public investment group in Quebec, partnered with Philippe Couillard, the Premier of Quebec, to invest $7.4 billion throughout the province over the coming decade. Included in this plan were new train lines in Montreal, to the West Island, to the airport, and across the Samuel du Champlain Bridge to the South Shore. Soon after, these projects were united into one larger plan. Then, on April 22, 2016, Sabia and Montreal Mayor Denis Coderre unveiled the new project, a $6 billion, 67-kilometer rail line across Montreal called the Réseau Express Métropolitain, or REM. In June 2017, the Canadian government pledged $1.3 billion to the project, and on September 27, 2017, it was approved by the National Assembly of Quebec. In February 2018, CDPQ awarded construction contracts, and then, on April 12, 2018, construction commenced. The REM will establish a 67-kilometer-long rail line across the Montreal metro area. It will start at Brassard along the South Shore, before crossing the St. Lawrence River along the Samuel du Champlain Bridge, and running west across downtown Montreal. It will then split into three branches, running to the North Shore, where it will replace the current Du Montagne line, in addition to the West Island and to the airport. Across this network, the REM will have three different track elevations. Along the South Shore and Northern Branch, it will be mostly ground level. In Eastern Downtown, across the river and along the West Island, it will be on elevated structures. Lastly, it will be underground in the 104-year-old Mount Royal Tunnel, and in a new 3.5-kilometer tunnel to access the airport. Along the REM, there will be a total of 26 stations. They will have modern designs, characterized by the use of wood, glass, and vegetation. This will create bright and green environments that will harmoniously integrate with their surroundings. Some of these will be very unique. The Edouard Montpetit station will sit 72 meters underground, making it the deepest station in Canada and one of the deepest in the world. At Ile de Sœur, the station's exterior will evoke the cables of the Samuel du Champlain Bridge, and at Central Station, renovations will preserve and enhance the architecture of the historic structure, which dates back to 1943. All of the REM stations will be closed and ventilated, with heating in the winter and air conditioning in the summer. They will feature elevators, Wi-Fi, and platform screen doors, the first use of such technology in North America. These will open only when trains arrive, maintaining a climate-controlled environment inside. Along the tracks, the REM will use 21st century light rail technology, with 212 trains from the Alstom Metropolis family of rolling stock. These carriages will be wide and spacious, and have air conditioning and heating systems. In addition, they will be outfitted with special features to ensure full functionality in even the most extreme winter conditions. Lastly, they will be fully autonomous, quickly and safely transporting commuters across the city without the need for operators. In total, the REM will cost around $7 billion. This funding comes from several sources, including CDPQ, the Quebec government, and the Canada Infrastructure Bank. With its grand scale, it is the largest public transit project undertaken in Quebec since the Montreal Metro in the 1960s. The REM will provide a list of benefits for Montreal. Its construction will generate 34,000 jobs and pay $2 billion in wages throughout the Quebec region. And when fully opened, it will operate 20 hours a day, 7 days a week. Along the central section, it will have high-frequency service with trains every 2.5 minutes during peak hours and every 5 minutes during non-peak hours. Eventually, if there is enough demand, this could even be increased to every 90 seconds. Combined with the line's average speed of 51 km per hour, this will create fast commute times across the city. Downtown to the airport will be only 20 minutes, and Brassard to Du Montagne will be only 51 minutes. 
This increased efficiency will add an estimated $3 billion to the regional economy, while attracting 180,000 daily passengers to the network. Not only will the REM be fast, it will integrate with Montreal's other transport infrastructure. At the central McGill and Edouard Montpetit stations, it will connect to the city's orange, green, and blue metro lines. It will also coordinate with the bus network to create new stops and platforms while working with the city's other commuter rail lines. Lastly, the REM will be a green project. To compensate for emissions released during construction, 250,000 new trees will be planted along the line. And once operational, the line's electric trains will help prevent 680,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions over the course of 25 years. Since construction commenced in April 2018, the REM has advanced significantly. In July and October 2018, excavation and construction of the Edouard Montpetit, Canora, and Ville de Montreal stations began. A few months later, works on the Brassard, Du Cartier, and McGill stations started. In spring 2019, the Montpellier, Du Ruisseau, and Cotelier stations began construction, and in May and July 2019, installation of elevated structures on the South Shore and Ansala Orme branches started, along with work on the airport station. Soon after, track installation on the South Shore began. In late 2019, tunnel boring machine Alice arrived at Techno Park Montreal, and construction on the Panama, Ile des Sorts, Boifranc, and Central stations started. Then, in March 2020, the COVID 19 pandemic hit. And in July 2020, shortly after renovation started on the Mount Royal Tunnel, unexpected explosives left back during its excavation in 1912 detonated. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Still though, these issues halted construction and pushed back the project's opening date. In addition, with rising costs, the project's budget was raised from $6.3 to $6.9 billion. Nevertheless, work continued. In spring 2020, the Ansala Orme, Marie Curie, and Fairview Point Claire stations began construction. And in October 2020, Alice launched from Techno Park Montreal towards the airport. Meanwhile, construction of a bridge across the Prairies River and works along the Samuel du Champlain Bridge had commenced. By the end of 2020, the first train cars had arrived and tests along the South Shore had begun. Throughout 2021, construction on the rest of the station started, and by early 2022, the elevated structures on the West Island and South Shore were finished. And on July 14, 2022, Alice finished her drive to the airport. As of August 2022, works are finishing up along the South Shore. In December 2022, service between Brassard and Central Station is expected to commence. As for the other parts of the line, work is progressing quickly. Stations are being finished up, track is being installed, and soon, testing will begin. By the end of 2024, the rest of the line is planned to open, except the airport, which will open in 2025. Planners are already looking past this. CDPQ has begun work on Rem de Lai, a $10 billion second phase that would run north to south along Montreal's east coast. However, the proposal, with its high cost and plans for large elevated structures cutting through Montreal's historic downtown, has proven controversial. Nevertheless, the original REM is here to stay. With its modern stations, comfortable surroundings, and quick commute times, it will serve as a 21st century evolution to Montreal's expansive transport network.